Hi, I'm Mike. Welcome back to the shop. I just repaired the clock from my wife's Corvette. I'm going to show you how you can do it too. Um, in this video, I'll do a teardown of the clock um, and the cleanup of the components and then the, re the rewinding of the solenoid and the reassembly. Uh, if I can do this, you can do this too. I hope you enjoy it. In order to remove the clock from the gauge console here, uh, you'll need to first remove the adjustment knob from the front of well, from the front of the clock here. And in order to do that, there's a there's a very small set screw. And it takes a flat handle screwdriver to to remove that. Once you've done that, and I'm going to zoom in here a little bit, you're going to need to take a quarter inch ratchet and remove two screws or two two cap screws um, one on each corner of of the of the clock so one up here and one over in the corner over here then gently remove the clock from the gauge uh, the gauge cluster the gauge console and the next thing you need to do in order to get the gauge apart is take a uh, pair of pliers, um, whichever you feel most comfortable using. Be really careful not to disengage or or disturb the uh, the second or the minute hand and the and the second hand and the hour hand on your um, on your clock. But turn it over, and there are two tabs that need to be pulled back. So. One is in the lower right hand corner and you can see it right here. So you uh, bend it back and then one is on the top side. Uh, let's see. Yeah, in, uh, in between the black tabs here. There's another one here that you need to be able to pull back. So you pull that back and then finally you remove um, in the back here, um, the tab, uh, the electrical connection, the, the power connection, and just and just remove that. It'll take. In order to remove the electrical uh, connection in the back of the clock, you're going to need a five sixteenths wrench, either a socket or whatever your favorite wrench is, and you'll take that apart. And note the order of assembly as you take it apart. So you've got the nut first then the electrical connection, then you've got a uh, uh, toothed lock washer on the inside. So, and then basically just pull back up here so you can see a little bit better. Then what you end up doing is removing the overall connection here. <laughs> All right. And it comes apart. <laughs> you do it very gently. Okay, so looking at the back of the clock here, from the top of the clock, you're going to see um, the mechanical portion of the clock and the electrical portion. So this is the solenoid in the back. And we're just going to test the electrical, or sorry, um, the mechanical side of the clock. And basically just, you can do it with your finger, but I'm doing it with a screwdriver just to make it easier to see. If you pull down on this a little bit, we should see the mechanism moving. Let's see. So there's the, the essentially the flywheel is moving. You can see it, and you can see. So the mechanical portion is working, and so that's not that's not the problem. 
and I, I knew that ahead of time. <laughs> but um, let me show you where the issue is. And I'm going to have to get really close. Hopefully I can get close, to, close enough on this. Back in the back of the clock, you're going to see this little wire right here. That wire is from the solenoid, and that wire is broken. You can see it. So that uh, connection there needs to be resoldered. Let me see if I can move it again. That is resoldered to, or that is the electrical connection that goes to the the power wire which we just uh, took off the uh, the electrical tab on that so there is uh, there's no power going to the solenoid so what we're gonna have to do is take this uh, solenoid assembly off uh, and remove the solenoid and either fix the wire by soldering it back together which will probably be impossible and probably not a wise idea anyways because the wire is probably worn out um, and then basically rewind the solenoid and then re-solder the connection back together so in order to take this apart there are um, three connections here or three stan uh, stanchions and you can see if I put my my needle nose pliers here, these two legs need to be squeezed together gently so that they don't get damaged. And you squeeze them together. And you squeeze the next two together. And then you squeeze the last one. And then it should it should come right off. Yeah, it's moving. Got one still hanging up here a little bit. Which one is it? I think it's this one here. Okay. Push it back in a little bit and squeeze it a little bit more. There it goes. Yeah, man. I'm trying not to bend anything. There it goes. Good. So it's apart now, and I just want to note the orientation of this. Now it's at a, now it's apart. The dip in the top here aligns with the dip in the top there, so it goes together that way. They can't go together. I don't think it. Yeah, it's they can't go together any other way. So that's the removal of the electrical portion from the mechanical portion, and as we can see still that the electrical portion is still working if I turn it over here to the top again and just pull it down 
can see that portion still working. So everything is uh, okay at this point. So I'm going to put all of the, I'm going to protect <laughs> the clock side of this, the mechanical side of it. I'm going to put it off into a box along with the electrical connection and the, oh look at that. I can show you that the, the second hand is, a, is actually working. So, all right, so I'm going to put um, all of that aside so I don't, uh, don't damage or lose uh, that, that, uh, those components. Okay, now examining this assembly here, we've got two, looks like swedges in the back here. We've got this one and this one. They've been, it's a metal inside the, this is a plastic base, and they've been uh, pushed in, so swedged into the back. So this isn't coming apart. It actually looks like this base has got, if you can look at it, that's not a, that's a, that's a fracture, I think, in the base. So it looks like it probably cracked when it was, when it was swedged together. So in order to get this apart, what I'm going to have to do I think is basically take this lever off. It's spring loaded and it's it's only attached by the spring and this this pivot here. So if I if I kind of twist this without losing the spring, because that that would ruin this. I'm just gonna twist it up and try to move it off the pivot. while capturing the spring. Let's see, there. So I moved it off the pivot. Eh, I thought it did. There, it's up off the pivot and then push it backwards. There, lift, lift and separate. There we go. Okay, so that comes off and the I'm going to leave, I don't want to lose that spring, so I'm going to put that also in the same box. And I'm going to look at the orientation of that. So, spring is going, the tooth is going, or the uh, end of the wire is going away from the end of the spring. So that's the solenoid out by orientation of that, and the other one. It's press fit in, so what I'm going to have to do is take this frame out, if I'm looking at and then bend down the tabs the other slightly, actually probably 90 degrees and hopefully not break it. Hopefully there's enough ductility okay, left. And then wind it. So that's my plan. What I'm doing, as you can see here, if, if you look real closely along with me, there is a little bit of a, a gap there. And so let me look, look at the orientation here. So the wire is here the grommet is here right below that so I'll be and the the post of the um, solenoid is in the curve section here and it's on the side of the plastic stanchion so what I'm going to do is very gently pry it back and forth without breaking the plastic base which is pretty important, otherwise this clock is toast. Unless I could glue it back together. So I'm gonna do this off camera, it's really hard to uh, <laughs> do this on camera. Okay, it wasn't easy, but I was able to rock it back and forth very gently and pry it very gently with this really small screwdriver, um, really paying attention to not putting any it very much stress on the the plastic um, frame here. I didn't want to break it at all. So it's um, it's ready to go. I'm ready to take it apart. And next thing I'm going to do is basically bend this frame again very gently, just enough in order to be able to um, facilitate wrapping, um, rewrapping this coil with. Uh, with copper wire. And you can see how how uh, thick this is. I'm going to, again, 
bend this off camera because this is pretty delicate stuff and I don't want to I don't want to break it um, by paying attention to the video versus paying attention to the component. So I'm just going to bend it down real slowly and I'll, I'll do that off camera. Okay, uh, okay, so I, uh, I think I was on the right track to begin with. I just need to be real careful with the wire. It's very delicate, so I'm just going to work this. Each one, it's going to take time, but um, I'll be able to get this off. So I'll, I'll unwrap it layer by layer. Just have to make sure I'm tugging uh, with a straight, really gently, straight away from the center of the of the solenoid so it'll come off I just have to be patient and uh, I'll show you the results when I'm done okay once you once you get the first layer off it's a little bit more robust you can almost just pull it like this so that is the second layer I'm pulling off here And now I'm on the third one, the third layer. It's going to be fun wind, rewinding this thing. I wonder if I could have just unwound a little bit <laughs> and then resoldered it. Oh well, I'm committed. <laughs> And now we're on the third, no, the one, two, three, yep, one, two, yeah, third layer. And now the fourth layer. And look at that at the end there. There's a little funny loop on it at the end to maybe hold it in place. Okay, now we're on the fifth layer. And I'm going to pay real close attention to how it's connected at the end here. Oh, look at that. Okay, there's a little bit of a slot at the end here to hold it in place. Let me zoom in. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little bit of a slot here to put the wire in to hold it in place. So we'll, we'll uh, use that as a possibility. So also, the, the wrap relative to the so putting it back on so it came off if I'm looking at the end here it came off clockwise I'm going to be wrapping it counterclockwise when I put it back in again looking towards the bottom of this so I'll be wrapping it back um, counterclockwise Okay, so that's the complete disassembly. I'm gonna, I'm going to uh, take a break, and then I'll come back and uh, I'm gonna probably mess around with the technique. I've got the, um, I got a 30 AWG red four ounce magnet wire. So that's what I, um, what I have purchased for this, and. So there's, there's what it is. High quality, yeah, yeah, made in China. Guess what? Anyways, so it's uh, it is magnet wire, and it's uh, it should be um, should be okay for this application. So I'm gonna sign off and come back in a little bit. 
So uh, I, I really roughly measured it with just against my arm and roughly about 18 feet of, uh, of this wire came off in the five turns that were on it. So just to give a little idea how tightly wound those were. I have no idea what size wire that is, but uh, I'll try to attempt to do the same. Okay, so here's my setup. I've got uh, a soldering iron here just to get the wire attached to the, the core. Um, so I've soldered it on. Um, prior to doing that, I cleaned off the, uh, the core using a heat gun to get rid of some of the lacquer that had already been put on or that had been put on during the uh, original winding. Um, I also uh, cleaned it with, uh, with some acetone um, just to make sure that there weren't any, you know, anything that needed to be cleaned off. So just make a cleaner joint. So now I've, I've soldered it on here. Let me get a little bit closer. And I'm going to have to clean the solder off a little bit, but um, the, the wire is currently attached. Um, so it'll, it'll at least give me the opportunity to, to start the winding. So I'm going to clean some of these blobs off now that I've got the wire attached. And um, I said previously that I'd be winding this counterclockwise. I look back at my video and uh, good thing I'm not a witness um, to a, a crime because I was actually unwinding counterclockwise and I needed to uh, wrap it clockwise. So when I'm when I'm doing this, I'll be wrapping it clockwise. And my attempt to get some sort of uh, even spooling off of this, I've uh, got an old uh, sledgehammer uh, or a light sledgehammer. Uh, here with a hole in it so um, I put a large screwdriver and hopefully this will provide enough tension to allow me to to hand wrap this. Now I've done some research on how well do I need to wrap it um, and I'm probably not going to be machine good but the, the real point here is to get the the number of uh, of wraps or layers um, to be uh, equivalent to what uh, was originally manufactured. And again, I went back and looked at my um, uh, video and I had counted five, but there were actually six. So I go one down, two back, three down, four back, five down, six back. So there were six layers. So I'm going to be rewrapping this with six layers or, or six wraps um, to get the equivalent power of what I originally had. So um, I'm going to clean up the solder here a little bit and then I'm going to begin uh, doing the wrapping. Well, I got the first wrap on. Doesn't look too bad. It was real tricky um, making the turn here. What I ended up doing was wrapping and then, and then pushing the the uh, the coils together so I wrapped and then pushed the coils you can see on my second wrap you can see kind of the technique uh, it's it's there but then I'll, I'll push it to the to the right of the of the screen um, and and tighten it up as I go along the other the other kind of tricky part here was at the end of this um, the wire didn't want to stay. So what I ended up doing is I put a little bit of super glue um, just to hold it in place and uh, I may have to do that um, on every return wrap because there's nothing holding the wire there but at least at least I got the turn and it and it's in. So um, I'm gonna keep going. Um, it looks it, this is looking better than I thought so I'm I'm a little ha I'm happy about that, but uh, we'll see how this continues. Gotta have a lot of patience, but the technique works. Once I get it wrapped a little bit, I, I hold tension and kind of push it together to 
close the gaps, and then just keep going. Sorry, my thumbs are in a way, but it's not easy to do. But you get the idea. Well, here it is. Um, I've got six wraps on it. It became harder and harder to get it as neat looking as the first one because the push the pushing technique didn't work. So I did my best to get it uh, with six wraps. Um, We'll see how this works. Uh, worst case, I gotta take it apart and do it again. <laughs> but I think uh, I think this will work. And uh, so, what the last the, the other last thing I did here also is um, on the last wrap, I did I did a little bit of a loop so that I kind of knotted it. Um, not a not a knot, but under basically wrapped it so that um, I was able to. Um, um, put one wrap on top of another so it's relatively locked in place I gave myself a little bit extra wire here to be able to uh, to work with when I have to solder it in to the base so um, I think I'm ready to, to try that and um, so I've got to uh, put the grommet back in uh, to the frame uh, run the wire through the grommet and then I'm going to very gently uh, close these um, the the casing around it. Uh, uh, when I bent it, I used two different or two uh, needle nose pliers. I'm going to try the same technique, uh, and hopefully I don't. Uh, to, I hope hopefully I don't break the frame. Uh, I'm going to do that off camera, and I'll show you what it looks like at the end here. Well, I got the uh, solenoid frame back into the plastic base really not easy to do these things were as I can tell or best I can tell it looks like the the uh, solenoid was actually melted into the base so it's kind of a as assembled um, uh, you know there are no tolerances here it basically was melted into the base um, so I had to bend Bending is probably not the best technique for getting this thing apart, but that, that's that's what I came up with. But getting these things lined back up was not um, not easy. Um, in any case, it's together. Um, next thing to do is I'm going to, um, as you can see, the wire is longer than it needs to be. What I'm going to do is uh, now solder. I got to clean a little bit of the varnish off um, by touching it with a solder iron, soldering iron so I'll, I'll do that first and then I will solder uh, the wire um, actually to the existing blob here I might as well might as well use that so clean it off first and then uh, solder it in and then I'll snip the wire well it's all back together my soldering technique may not be the greatest, but I'm pretty sure it's going to hold together. So now I'm going to reassemble the unit and then I'm going to put it on a test bench and make sure it works before I put it back in the car. Okay, one of these days I will invest in test leads, but for now this works. <laughs> so. Um, I've got the positive hooked up here and I've got a negative and all I'm going to do is touch the negative to the casing and we'll watch what happens. Just listen. Look at that. Woohoo! It works. And if I just hold it here, what I'm going to do is show the back. You see how it hit here? How these two pieces here. So let me Hold it. We're going to watch that move and touch. That's it. Beautiful. <laughs> 